some protests. Joining us now is the CFO of Chevron, Pierre Breber. Pierre is part of our CNBC CFO Council. He's with me in Washington today. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me, Sarah. And an update for oil prices. I, I was prepared to talk about weaker prices and China, and Powell just talks about moderating interest rate hikes and soft landing, and the market goes higher. What, what do you see as the primary driver? Well, it's a volatile and uncertain time. Demand is strong for our products. The two big questions are, can the Fed engineer a soft landing? And as you said, will COVID restrictions in China continue? On the supply side, supply is tight. And the key question there is, will we see disruptions when the EU implements sanctions both in December on crude and February on future products? So we're really prepared for prices that are either higher or lower next year. What's happening on the demand side with these China lockdowns and protests? How much does that affect the equation given they're, what, the world's top consumer? Yeah, the second largest economy, it, it certainly is weighing on the complex, and, but it, we, don't, we believe it'll, it'll pass at some point in time. And so that's, again, one of the key questions is how long those restrictions last. But again, if we look at the economic activity and will we have a slowdown and the depth of that slowdown, those are the two key uncertainties on the demand side. The supply side is pretty clear. Whether prices are higher or lower next year really depends on demand. Supply side is clear and still pretty tight. Right. Supply is tight. I mean, we're growing our supplies here in the country strongly. We are up 6% on oil and gas production. Our Permian's at record production, 700,000 barrels a day. It's going to a million barrels a day by 2025. Gulf of Mexico deep water offshore, we're going to go up 50% by 2026. So we're certainly doing our part to grow uh, domestic supplies here. But as you know, it's a global market. You're also bringing oil from Venezuela, which is getting a lot of attention. There's a report today that that, that could be shipped from Venezuela into the U.S. as soon as December. Is that, is that true? It's a limited expansion in our activities. It just happened with a new license. Uh, yes, we expect to be able to bring um, crude to the U.S., which previously was not allowed to happen. We expect that there'll be modest increases in production over time, but it's really too early for me to give you specific guidance. We need to get our teams on the ground working, and then when we know more, we'll, we'll share more. But you use the word modest, so I think a lot of Americans are wondering if it's worth that risk of doing business there with the track record of the Venezuelan government. Well, Amos Hochstein mm -hmm. of the uh, administration was on CNBC earlier today, and, and th those are his words. I mean, this is really U.S. government policy. We're just focused on safely delivering energy to a world that needs it, and we're following U.S. government um, very strict licenses that have expanded slightly now. Also wanted to talk to you about investors in the energy space. You're the top performing sector so far this year. This was a sector that was, I don't have to tell you, hated and trashed around ESG concerns, which way the world was moving. How, 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 much, how much confidence have you gained back from investors, which I know you're on the road talking to every day? We're winning investors back, but we got a long way to go. So energy is about 5% of the S&P 500 by market cap, but more than double that by earnings. So you can think of it as we're trading about half of the market multiple. So at Chevron, we talk about delivering higher returns and lower carbon. Our return on capital employed this year is over 20%. We're the country's second largest producer of bio-renewable diesel. Uh, we issued a methane report, shows that we're a leader in methane management. So I think we're doing a lot to convince investors that we can sustain higher returns in a lower carbon future.